Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Oh, hi. Back in the day, uh, it was like everybody, every, every musical act got their own variety show. Although mostly it did seem like it was couples, like Sonny and Cher, the Captain and Tennille, Donnie and Marie. Anyway, um, somehow this brings us to this week's big question, uh, which is, which musical artist or group, past or present, deserved or deserves their own, uh, deserved, a, sorry, a televised variety hour? What sort of acts would the show feature? Who would be the guest stars? Would there be recurring segments? If so, what would they be? Well, my suggestion is for the Jenna Torturer's Good Time Variety Hour featuring Piercy, the talking Piercy. Mm -hmm. Now, the show would open, the Jenna Torturers would come out, and there'd be a big musical number, probably come junkie, but there would be a big musical number, and it would feature the Jenna Torturer's dancers. Now, folks, unfortunately, we can't show you a picture of the Jenna Torturer's dancers. Otherwise, this video won't be able to air in Texas, Florida, or Iran. Um, but what we can show you, which is almost as good, it's a picture of our own Dan Stevens as the Emperor Caligula. <laughs> Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And and believe me, mister, I cannot see it. Um, now look. It's a good good holiday present for you folks. Also a good Hanukkah present. You can enjoy that eight nights in a row. Um, so... Where was I? Oh, yeah. So up next, Piercy, you know, the talking piercing little puppet. Well, he would banter with that week's guest star before that week's guest star would have their genitals tortured. Now, each week's guest star will come probably from the world of politics or big business. So these will be people who want to be recurring guest stars like, oh, no, please don't hit my nuts with a ball peen hammer again. Um, so the other thing that would be kind of a recurring act would be Libertino, the magician. Uh, Libertino would be a sort of 19th century dandy, and he would pull things out of strange and unusual places and then make them disappear again. So I would like to see that. Um, and what they would do also on the show, I think, would be a good idea to update bits from old 1970s variety shows. Because every now and then you'll bump into somebody and they'll say, you know, ever since they canceled the Ken Berry Wow show, I don't know how to fit in. And this show would definitely help people fit in. There'd be there'd be a bridge there between generations, you know? People, maybe they could update some stuff from the Hudson Brothers. Be like, I love the Hudson Brothers. And then they go, well, here, that you can watch this Jenna Torturer show. And I didn't come up with this just because there's a song on our new record about the Jenna Torturers, but there is. So, synergy. Okay, I think Joe is next. I am. I think uh, Henry Rollins would should have his variety his own uh, variety show. <clears throat> it could be the Henry Rollins show. And uh, what sort of acts would it feature? Uh, musical acts, whatever you know. Bands are maybe wanting to promote their things, like I don't know the Gloria Holes or whoever. Uh, unusual acts that they find, uh, like. <laughs> Uh, like old variety shows used to have, like the uh, <clears throat> the Ed Sullivan show used to have jugglers and things like that. But unusual things, you know, maybe some dance troops, uh, comics, different things. You know, it'll be different every week. Uh, who would be the guest stars? Guest stars could be maybe Ian McKay, Jay Maskus, his friends from the SST world. Uh, Glenn Danzig would be a regular guest star, and. <laughs> there would be there would be a recurring segment featuring Glenn uh based on the <laughs> based on some of the skits that skits that uh adapted out of the forever and ever would be it would be the Henry and Glenn forever and ever skits uh, <laughs> hopefully Glenn will have a sense of humor and and agree to do this um but you know that's that's kind of what what it would be the Hank Hank uh or Henry uh, Rollins show. I picture it beginning with like the 
like the 69th Street Bread song, like Henry Rollins, like walking down. So you're like, slow down. You move. Yeah, there could be like yeah. a filmed segment, but it would be yeah. mostly in front of an audience, like Saturday Night Live or something. Or like, mm -hmm. da, yeah. Or he, he could, he would probably, inter he's good at interviewing people. And he, he'd probably do a lot of monologue at the beginning. Of I was going to say, spoken word would probably but, be featured. But yeah, he would interview the acts before they, because he's, he's good with people that way. I think it would be really entertaining. He's you know? a people person. <laughs> yeah. It, it, that's such it, a great it, sense of humor too <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> <laughs> so that's my show i'll pitch it to maybe nbc um so i thought a good uh <clears throat> band to have a variety hour would be uh the minutemen <clears throat> so i imagined they would have like they're all their guests would be like working class people <clears throat> non-celebrities it would just be like a working class guy they'd have them on as a guest from maybe some like local politicians and they would have debates um uh they probably have bands on that weren't like straightforward punk bands they probably have unusual bands and like no you know unknown bands would probably take place the whole thing in like a warehouse um Maybe they would do comedy sketches. Maybe they would have a Christmas special where D Boone is Santa Claus. <laughs> I don't uh, think he's with us anymore. No, no he's but <laughs> wasn't the whole idea. Oh, I see. You can go back past your presence. So this you is taking place in the present. past. Okay. I like to imagine them having to sit through like those old acts, kind of what Joe said on the Ed Selvin show. Like to see like punks from the '80s have to host a show where somebody's coming out there and spinning plates while saber dance plays. You know, da, 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 da. that would be that would be fantastic. Well, the Globe of Death, yeah. <laughs> or ladies and gentlemen, Maury Amsterdam and Maury Amsterdam. I always thought there should be like a street star search where you have people like that perform in the streets, like do a competition you know what i mean like a star search like traveling the world finding street performers yeah i mean <clears throat> even if they're like homeless people who do stuff like you know there's some pretty talented people out there in the streets yes not, the, not the sax player at at suburban <laughs> station not the sax player <laughs> the sax player the flute, the flute player at city hall yeah, he's good, but not not the sax guy at Suburban Station. No, <laughs> folks, that's the guy who plays like that. Like he played, he only played nine notes from every song, and he was doing like careless whisper, and like over and over again. And I saw a bunch of old women go, "Isn't it great to come into the city and see an authentic jazz musician?" Oh, he's playing wham, you moron! Get on the train and go back where you came from, you idiots. So yeah, that was my variety, the Minutemen variety minute. Okay, folks, the year is 1982. Everyone is tuned in to watch the Grace Jones Power Hour with Whoa. a season end special titled Keeping Up with the Joneses, guest starring Tom Jones. She'd introduce him, and they'd have some sexy, innuendo-lated banter, and then Tom would sing, She's a lady, while Grace kind of mugs and poses and dances. Also guest starring, Davy Jones from The Monkees. Grace was really into weightlifting at one point, and a regular segment of her variety show is her working out and lifting weights with one of her guest stars. And this season-ending special showcases her with Davy Jones from The Monkees pumping iron. At the end of the segment, they would sing a duet of A Little Bit Me, A Little Bit You. Our final two guest stars are Jonesy the Cat from Alien and Buddy Epson as Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Uh, Buddy and Jonesy the Cat would participate in a comedy skit with Davey, Tom, and Grace reenacting the dinner scene from the movie Alien. And the show ends with Grace singing a cover of Love is the Drug. I like that. Remember the Pee Wee thing where uh, the holiday special where Grace Jones gets sent to the playhouse accidentally and he's like, back in the box, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my show. That, that is a good idea. For some reason, I just had it pop in my head. I'd like to see uh, Grace Jones do the, the Mary Tyler Moore, Donald Sutherland uh, scene, you know, from uh, Ordinary People. Give her the goddamn camera. That, that would be good. I'd like to see that.
I think these were all excellent ideas. Um, so I'm I'm going to I'm going to workshop them uh, with, with some Hollywood people I know, <laughs> and then I'll never be allowed back in Hollywood. <laughs> okay, well, that went that went surprisingly quickly. Uh, so if you folks tuned in for a long show, I'll stretch this part out. Hey, because it's time for recommendations. All right. <laughs> This week, uh, I'm going to start by saying I, I turned 60 this year. And when you turn 60, you start to say, there's some stuff I'm never going to get to do. Now, for me, that's a pretty small list, so I'm lucky there. Um, but one of the things I'm probably never going to get to do is score a horror movie, which is something I always wanted to do. Uh, and so um, I've helped out with some sound design, but I've never got to score one. And so whenever I hear a horror movie that's scored really well, I try to get the soundtrack. So this week, I'm going to recommend you head over to Bandcamp and you get the soundtrack to one of my favorite horror movies ever, The Black Coat's Daughter. The Black Coat's Daughter took me on a sea ride underwater. That's a that's a Dukes of the Stratosphere reference. But anyway, um, Black Coat's Daughter is uh, scored by Elvis Perkins, um, who is a legacy artist. That's what I can say. He's the son of Anthony Perkins. And he's also the uh, brother of the director of Black Coat's Daughter, uh, who is named Oz Perkins. Uh, but the great thing about uh, this guy is he he understood the assignment. The assignment was make a soundtrack for a horror movie that takes place in the winter. And this thing is very stark. It's not your usual horror movie soundtrack. There's elements of folk in it. It's, it's just really interesting. And I like to put it on. Um, I, I have like a, like an opposite. A lot of people put on what they call background music that they don't engage with. And I put on a lot of stuff that make me nervous and tense. Makes me makes me work a lot. Um, okay, uh, you know, speaking while we're sticking into the in the area of film cinema, um, some people say that Steven Spielberg is dedicated to the art of film uh, because he made his oldest son um, have cosmetic surgery to look like E.T. so he could film a holiday special in his home. I am also dedicated to the art of cinema, and I think I'm a good, if not better, director than Steven Spielberg. Um, over on my channel, there's going to be a series of short videos. The first one is up. Second one should be up by the time you folks get this. Uh, it's called My Brilliant Career in Music. Uh, the first episode deals with me working with Stevie Nicks. And when I did an album with her, episode two, Michael Jackson. So you're going you're gonna to want to watch and study those future filmmakers. And then finally... I want to recommend these. I may have recommended them on another show, but I, I, an earlier episode, but I want to recommend them again. These are cable ties, and they cost about eight bucks. Um, on last Saturday, I went over to a friend's home studio. And he's like, how do you like my home studio? And I'm like, your home studio is ass. Your home <laughs> studio is ass, okay, because you don't have cable ties. Sooner or later, a toddler's going to come running through here. There's no ca The cables are all over the place. There's no cable ties. Kids going to get stuck. Kids do that. Going to get all wrapped up in them. Eh, he's going to be dead. And, and, and the kid's family is going to own all your vintage equipment. So get some damn cable ties or get sued. So that's my advice for this week. Although Donnie and Marie's lawyers will probably be giving us a call. I have a, recomm a recommendation of uh, two new singles that just came out from Hasco Enjoyments. That is... J.P. Hassan's uh, latest musical project. You may know him uh, from J.P. Incorporated or Plesiosaur. Um, what's different about this project is it's all instrumental, as far as I know, at least these two singles are. And uh, <clears throat> I understand there will be more singles coming, and there, you can get them on Bandcamp. Uh, we'll put the link. And the songs are... The Seattle Mariners are my favorite baseball team. And it's okay to put ketchup on a hot dog if that's what you like to eat. <laughs> and they're, the music is is pretty cool. Both of these songs are kind of on the mellow side. Um, but quirky, as you'd probably expect from Plesiosaur. <laughs> I like it. And I recommend it. Cool. And that's all I got. <clears throat> I would like to recommend using alliteration. <laughs> and maybe uh, leave your best alliterations in the comment section. I had a typing class with my friend Smitty, 
and he used to type uh, to practice typing. He would type filthy alliterations like Frank fiercely felt Francine's. You get the idea, right? <laughs> Francine firmly fondled Frank's. Like he type, and he he was so fast, like the teacher would never see them. And he get him over to me, and I, I think I, I nearly, despite my mom being a secretary teaching me to type at an early age, I almost failed that class because most of it I just doubled over, cracking up at his alliterations. So yeah, filthy alliterations. Smitty, we need to have an episode about Smitty. Where we, we should can... have we should have an episode, a whole Smitty episode. There's stories about Smitty. <laughs> um, so yeah, use alliteration. Although I haven't since I mentioned it. <laughs> but yeah, leave them in the comments. I use it all the time. I'm not gonna do it right now. Dirty Dan's dictionary dictates that. <laughs> Uh -oh. um, I would like to recommend this week the artwork of Andrew Chalfin. Um, Andrew is a longtime friend of the band. He was a housemate of ours when we lived in West Philadelphia in the late 1980s. Um, he's both a musician. Uh, I happen to play drums with him in the instrumental band called I Think Like Midnight. And he is also an accomplished artist. He has gallery shows and he has a website, which we'll link to with uh, you can see some of his artwork. It's very colorful. It's uh, kind of geometric and somewhat psychedelic in nature. Um, and uh, his work is for sale. There's probably uh, some stuff that's at a reasonable price if you'd like to pick some up. Um, I have a piece of his uh, hanging in our uh, uh, little TV room. And uh, so I want to recommend the artwork of Andrew Chalfin. And of course, always remember, folks, that the Space Brothers are watching you. If we could give you one bit of advice, so you go to bed tonight, just, just remember, I'm going to close the shades because the Space Brothers are watching you. <clears throat>